All right, we're back. Uh, thank you for joining us. And um, we've been talking about civil cases or civil litigation, and we've been talking about the main phases or parts of it. Already we've talked about the pleadings and we talked about the possibility of a summary judgment. The next thing we need to talk about is discovery. Discovery is really important. Um, and actually, this is what, uh, you know, like I say, I, I'm a professor, I'm on the academic side. Uh, when I was practicing, I did business law, so I did not litigate too many cases. Um, but my wife does do that, so she can tell us what discovery is and why it's so important. It really is the hallmark of modern or contemporary litigation. So I'll let you take it away. Well, discovery is so important because that's where you get the other parties evidence, what they're basing their allegations on. Now, discovery comes in several forms. Um, interrogatories, uh, which are written responses to specific questions. Requests for admissions, which is, you know, admit or deny this allegation. And also requests for production, which is where you produce the documents, any tangible um, hard drives, you know, whatever you have um, that supports your claim. And then, most importantly, which you guys are probably familiar with, depositions. Depositions are very important um, in the discovery phase, in the litigation phase, because that's where you get to sit down with the other side and hear exactly what they're alleging. Now, depositions are important in trial because you can use depositions to, you know, corner someone in and um, impeach them if you have to, if they're giving conflicting testimony. Now, um, I don't know if there have been any, uh, there's been depositions in the big cat case. Oh, yeah. And in fact, you know, those of you uh, have asked you to watch Tiger King, you'll recall some of uh, um, Joe Exotic's deposition, deposition is there. Yes. We just finished watching the Jeffrey Epstein docuseries, Filthy Rich, and there's a lot of deposition testimony there. Um, and, uh, and, and in fact, in the module, I've included a reenactment of a deposition from the movie, The Social Network. Yes. It's my favorite scene from the movie. Mm -hmm. And so you can see, it's actually a pretty realistic depiction of what a deposition is like. One of the things I want, uh, and, and Sitio can explain this further, one of the interesting things about a deposition is that it doesn't occur in a courtroom. Mm -hmm. it, there's no judge present. Usually it's at a lawyer's office. Now, of course, a lot or of it's- Or a court room, reporter's office. Or a court reporter's office, exactly. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is a level of formality. A court reporter is there. Witnesses are sworn. Um, but it's fascinating. This is all done outside of the courtroom. Right. But those, that testimony is taken inside the courtroom. Now, um, with depositions, um, the other party has a chance to object based on uh, relevancy, uh, attorney-client privilege, other objections that they feel why their client shouldn't have to answer those questions. Um, and sometimes, you know, those objections are baseless, <laughs> but they make them anyways just to avoid um, the embarrassment or whatnot of their client having to answer specific questions. Now, the, the unique thing about a deposition is you can ask anything you want. You can ask something totally unrelated. In um, Joe Exotic's deposition, they can ask him anything about his husband's, about his personal life, anything that even though it may not to you be relevant to the um, issues at hand, that were brought forth in the complaint. In fact, let me say this, it was another really important thing about depositions that make it a really powerful weapon in the discovery process. Now remember, both the plaintiff and the defendant are both taking discovery. They're both sending deposition requests to each other, mm -hmm. interrogatories, requests for production of documents. But here's the thing about depositions that's really special, um, that any witness, uh, any person, even if they're not named in the complaint, the parties can take their deposition if they have information that's relevant to the case or, as it's formulated in the modern rules of civil procedure, information that's calculated to lead to the production of relevant information. That's why you have such a broad scope in these. I, if you see, I don't want to give it away, any spoiler alerts, but if you see the Jeffrey Epstein docuseries, you'll see some of the, you know, quote unquote, non-relevant questions they ask of Jeffrey Epstein in order to throw him off and see what they could find, you know, in building their civil cases for the victims. But um, the other forms of discovery, like a request for admissions and production of documents and interrogatories, those can only go to the other parties who are named in the caption of the complaint. Right. 
By the way, this explains why yeah. Big Cat Rescue, I should say, sues, for example, Joe, includes Joe Exotic's mother in the complaint, right? Because now they can, now in addition to taking her depo, which they could have done anyways, they can send her interrogatories and production of documents right. and stuff like that. But I see you were about to uh, chime in. Well, um, there is t times when you can send a notice of production to a non-party. Um, like if uh, someone does work on my house, but I don't really need to depose them, but I would like their mm -hmm. file materials. I can, add, you know, like a mitigation company or whatnot, I can ask for okay. their file materials, um, even though they're a non-party. So there are cases then. Um, the one thing I will emphasize, though, again, just wrapping this up, is that with request for production of documents along with depositions, you can see how they both work hand in hand, right? Um, request for production of documents, that includes emails, that includes electronic yeah. discovery, that includes text messages, yeah. that includes uh, social media posts, uh, you know. And, and so this is why, just as a piece of advice, anytime you post something on social media, anytime you fire off an email or a text, you have to, especially if it's in the business context, you have to pretend, what if a lawyer, gets what if opposing this. counsel gets a hold of this, right. you know? What are they gonna make of it? And so uh, I remember Sidja teaching me this uh, from her own, uh, legal uh, battles, you know, if you have to say something nasty to somebody, say it over the phone. Yeah, do, you know? <laughs> do not say it in an email because yeah. that can be produced. Now, sometimes what a lot of attorneys do is in the header, they'll put confidential. Right. So that way um, it's prevented from um, being produced because they've already, you know, uh, labeled it as confidential or work product or attorney client privilege. All right, great. I think we have a big picture now. I'll do just one uh, extra video just summing all this up in the context of the Big Cat Rescue case. I have the court, uh, most recent court order here. Uh, but now at least you have a big picture as how the litigation process works. Uh, first, we're going to have pleadings. Uh, we're also going to have discovery. And at some point, if there's no material issue in fact, right, no, um, in dispute, um, there could be a summary judgment, even before discovery or oftentimes after discovery, but before trial. All this stuff is occurring pre-trial. The larger point I want to get across, and this is something I do really want you to know, is that this is why um, getting your day in court in a civil case is really time-consuming and expensive, because of the largely because of the discovery process. Um, there are some things to speed it up, like summary judgment, motion to dismiss, but even that requires a lot of legal firepower, you know, uh, uh, drafting those motions. There could, uh, the judge could require a hearing to hear the uh, parties out, their arguments. But now you have a big picture of the pretrial litigation process. Well, with that, we'll conclude. Uh, I guess that you will say goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Enjoy um, your semester and stay safe. And go Knights. Bye-bye.